Hey, what's up? DIYers, Mike Mike Boards with the Mike Boards channel. Thank you for watching. We're talking reverse osmosis systems today, and ours was down for about a month. We have a GE model, and we would replace a part, and then it would work for a day or two, and then it would stop filling with water. We finally figured it out. All right, DIYers, inside the kitchen now, and there is our GE reverse osmosis faucet. Nothing fancy. It does have the brush nickel finish, and it matches our main sink faucet, which we like. However, what we want to do is go down below, we've got our storage tank on the left-hand side, and there is our filter and membrane case. I'll reposition the camera and explain what really went on and caused our full meltdown to the system. At this point, I repositioned the camera, and it started out right after changing our filters and membrane. And all we were doing is replacing the filters and membrane at the manufacturer's recommended time frame. However, right after replacing the filters and membrane, that is when everything went south with the system. The system could no longer get water to the tank, and that's a big problem. So what then happened is over the next few weeks, it basically sent us on a full rabbit race trying to figure out what exact part was causing the issue. And DIYers, we replaced everything, including the automatic shutoff valve, the entire flow restrictor. We also replaced the tank itself because after replacing several parts on that filter case, the only thing really left was basically the tank. However, unfortunately, after replacing the tank, it still was unable to get water from the filter case through the lines and to the tank. So after that, we then replaced the faucet, believe it or not. Yeah. And when you replace the faucet with this exact RO system, you have to replace all three of the red, blue, and black water lines. And we did that because basically we had reached a point where replacing everything led us to think, well, maybe it's the air gap on the actual faucet. Maybe the air gap has failed or is stuck in the open or closed position. So let's just replace it. However, after replacing the faucet, well, guess what? It still was not fixed. And with all that said, after replacing basically everything, we did have a second set of filters and membrane that we ordered with the replacement filters and membrane that we put in after taking the original ones out. In other words, we ordered two sets just to have one set as backup, which allowed us to have that set of filters and membrane on deck when it comes time for the next time frame replacement of all three of those cartridges. So what we did is we took that second set of filters and membrane. We took the brand new set out that we literally just installed maybe two to three weeks prior, and we inserted those filters and membrane thinking that it is going to solve the issue. And DIYers, guess what? It did not. And at that point, I was completely confused, however, not willing to give up, which fast forward to a random night I was laying in bed and obviously losing sleep over this, it dawned on me. I was replacing these filters and membrane during the summer. However, I actually bought these filters and membrane, and again, two sets during the winter months, and I purchased them from homedepot.com. And I remember the actual delivery date when I placed the order online. However, we actually were out of town and the delivery came a few days early, which in my opinion, it wasn't a big deal. I didn't think anything of it. And when we got home, we noticed that the actual box or package was covered in about two inches of snow and had been sitting outside for two days in the freezing cold weather. And again, two sets of filters and membrane in this package or box. So as I was laying there in bed, I thought to myself, the freezing cold weather ruined both sets of filters and membrane. They were basically ruined before I even brought them inside where they sat in my office for a few months in the warm temperature. And come summertime, I replaced the filters of membrane and it caused havoc with the entire system. So basically DIYers, I think you already kind of know where this is going. My thought was I've got to go back to Home Depot, purchase a new set of filters and membrane. This will be my third set. I'll go directly to the Home Depot store, purchase the set, come straight home, pull the filters and membrane that are currently in the case out and install the brand new ones I just purchased from Home Depot. And that's exactly what I did. And guess what DIYers? The system was back up and running immediately and efficiently and perfectly as designed to do. We then basically did an entire new purging procedure with the system and after that we have had zero issues with this RO system. It has worked perfectly. And maybe two to three days later I actually called the GE RO customer service and asked them, hey if you let these filters and membranes sit out in freezing cold weather for a few days, will that harm them? And the customer support agent said, yeah you don't want these outside in freezing cold weather. It is not good for the filters nor the membrane. So DIYers I wanted to share that with you and scrolling above right now is a link to our video playlist for our RO system and it's got a bunch of videos showing several helpful replacement procedures. Again, faucet, tank, flow restrictor, auto shutoff valve. It also shows a full sanitation process of this exact system. You may also find that helpful. So again, definitely check that out. Hopefully DIYs, this helps. Do us a favor. Below the video, you will see that thumbs up icon. Click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely ring your YouTube bell. That would be very helpful to us. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching.